I think I need to change the language that I've been using to describe what capacitors actually store. So let me remind you of uh, how we might use a capacitor in a battery. If I connect the negative terminal of this battery to the negative input of this capacitor and connect the positive terminal of the battery to the positive terminal, then I've used six volts of electric potential difference to store charge. Yeah, I've said I've, I store charge on this capacitor, and once the capacitor is full of charge, then electricity stops flowing in the circuit. Now let's see if we've really stored any charge. And I've got some other wires connected with a light bulb. Let's see if there's any charge that can make the electricity flow. Sure. The light bulb glows and it finally goes dim once this thing has lost all of its charge. Ah, I'm not going to say charge anymore. I'm going to replace that with energy. It would be just as well to say that by connecting the battery to the capacitor, I store energy in the capacitor. And when I connect it back to the light bulb, the capacitor is able to deliver that energy to power the bulb. And it's not just a matter of semantics. Um, let's take this away and replace it with a parallel plate capacitor. So I'm going to stop saying that capacitors store charge and start to say capacitors store energy. And the reason why is that this metal plate is connected to the positive terminal of this battery. And the other metal plate is connected to the negative terminal. The total charge of the system is actually zero. What really happens here is the battery has an electric potential that removes electrons from this piece of metal. They get conducted through the wire, through the battery itself, through this wire. And ultimately, whatever electrons were taken off of this metal have now been deposited on this metal. So this becomes a negatively charged conductor. This becomes the positively charged conductor. And as you know, if I were to touch them together, that would, we say, discharge the capacitor. But actually, it's still zero charge. Uh, it was zero charge on these two plates before I hooked it up. As a system, it's zero charge when it's connected, but it's not zero energy anymore. The fact is, the electrons that are on this plate would love nothing more than to come back to neutralize this plate. And so that desire to neutralize is, represents a form of electrical potential energy. Right. So if people ever say that a capacitor stores charge, I get the idea. I think what we mean is the amount of charge, the amount of positive charge that's stored on the positive plate. Or when we say how much charge is stored, we're talking about how much negative charge is stored on the negative plate. We're never talking about the charge of the whole system because that's going to be zero. But we can all agree that capacitors store energy, and we can illustrate that. Instead of a uh, battery that's used to power the light bulb, I can use a hand-powered generator. So let's take that light bulb, or we can use a green light bulb in this case. Now, as long as I crank the handle on my generator at a steady speed, then that should produce a steady voltage, and it glows with a fairly consistent brightness to it. Now, let's get rid of the light bulb and replace it with a capacitor. So, what is this storing? Charge or energy? Well, it stores positive charge on the positive plate, negative charge on the negative plate, but zero overall charge for the system. All I'm really doing is providing the input energy to drive electrons off of one plate and onto another. And now they have the potential to want to come back together and neutralize. And that's when I'm storing energy. So I crank it. We don't see anything light up. We don't hear any loud noises. Nothing special seems to be happening. I can disconnect it. And this capacitor seems to look the same as it did. Well, it does look the same, but it doesn't act the same. This now has energy stored in it. And this time, when I reconnect my generator, then instead of using my hand to crank it, the energy comes back out of the capacitor and can be converted from electrical potential energy into mechanical energy, energy of motion. And I think it's kind of neat that if I change the red into black, 
that it spins in the opposite direction, okay? Anyway, let's stick with this language going forward. Capacitors store energy. 